Hello and welcome to another filter grade tutorial. My name is Layden and in this quick video I'll be showing you how to motion track in Adobe Premiere Pro. Motion tracking is super helpful when you're adding a color grade to a specific section or object in your video clip when that object is moving. Now unfortunately Premiere Pro does not have the same motion tracking capabilities as maybe After Effects. However I'm going to show you a couple simple motion tracking techniques that will get the job done. So this first clip I'm going to work with is this clip of a cow on the beach. Now his face is a little blown out as far as the highlights go. So I want to add a color grade just to his face. But as you can see, this video clip is kind of moving up and down. I'm going to apply a color grade just to the cow's face and then track it. So there's a couple ways you can actually apply the color grade. You can either duplicate this clip and add it on top, or you can just add a adjustment layer. I find that just duplicating this clip is easier. So if you hold down option or alt, you can click and just drag and bring this clip to the next video track and make sure you select it top clip. If you don't already have your Lumetri color window open, just go to the top window and down click on Lumetri color. So now I'm just going to add my color grade. I'm going to bring down the overall exposure a bit. Definitely bring down the highlights. I'm going to bring down my whites a bit and then bring down the blacks because I do want a higher contrast in the face so it sticks out a bit better and then maybe warm it up a little bit too. Quickly go to the creative tab and I'm going to sharpen it. Not too much. Just again so it sticks out a bit better. All right. So now I'm going to go over to the left hand side under effect controls and I'm going to click the ellipse mask tool and what that does is creates a circle mask so whatever is outside of the circle is going to be the bottom clip here and whatever is inside is going to be what I just did so all my color corrections are actually happening inside the circle and you can always change this by clicking the invert button down here and that will switch them up so outside is your color grade and the inside is the original clip but for this reason I'm going to leave the inside my color grade so now I'm going to adjust this so that it fits the cow's face and I'm also going to pull this circle and that's going to extend the feather making for a more gradual color grade so it doesn't look too obvious. Okay, so it doesn't matter too much where you start in the clip. When you're motion tracking for color grade, it's very straightforward. All you have to do is go over here under mask. You're gonna hit this little play button and this is gonna automatically track your video, everything forward of where your playhead is. And this is going to track everything backwards. So I always like to start just going forward and then I'll return and go backwards. You can start your playhead at the beginning of the clip that we only have one motion to do. However, I just like to start playhead at the point of the video where the subject is very clear and obvious and where I can accurately set up my mask. So all I have to do is hit this button and it's gonna start tracking. Now I'll speed this up here. All right, so there we are. Now I just gotta go back to where I began and find the original keyframe just by using the left and right arrow keys. So it looks like the first couple keyframes, there's not a lot of movement happening. So I'll just find a good spot where the mask is moving and whenever it stops moving, that's where I'll hit play again. As you can see, the mask is moving here, but once I get to about these keyframes here, the mask stops moving. So again, instead of going forward, I'm just going to go backward and click this and this can track everything before my playhead. You can't even tell the effect is added, but if I toggle on and off this layer, color grade definitely helped out a bit. Now, once the sky is visible, you can kind of see a darkening up here. So I can actually go ahead and just adjust this a little bit more. Click on the mask and I can just bring that in a bit more. And then all I have to do is retrack everything or you could go frame by frame if your tracking isn't accurate. And using this, you can go step by step going to the next frame and it's going to follow what you just did while still tracking it. So this is a better way to be completely sure of your motion tracking. You can just go one frame at a time. It's still going to track it for you, but you have more control over it. So if I move this up a bit more now and click the next frame, it's going to follow what I just did. I'll bring it down and again, it's going to follow. Now what I found in my experience with motion tracking in Premiere, it really depends on what camera and what lens you use and the lighting conditions. Premiere recognizes edges and areas of contrast. So if you're shooting in lower light, it may have a hard time. So there you go. That's how you track a mask for a color grade. And this next clip, I want to show you how to add a image or text and then have that appear as if it is tracking the video as well. So I'm going to actually put this text you are here and I'm going to have this track a certain area of this forest sort of like a tourism video where it's showing where your hotel or private forest cottage might be. So I'm actually just going to toggle this guy off for now and I'll deal with it later. There is no real motion tracking button here in Premiere for any elements other than masks. So what I'm going to do is kind of a, a workaround way. I'm going to duplicate this layer just like I did before. Highlight this and I'm actually going to increase the exposure so that it's super bright. What this is going to do is act as a marker so I'm able to manually track now again, I'm going to go over and I'm going to create a ellipse mask, make a tiny little circle. And this doesn't matter if you have a feather or not. So I'm just going to select this little area of the video here because it kind of sticks out a bit and it'll be easier for Premiere to track this. So again, I've kind of selected a random area. This section of the video isn't visible once I get closer to the beginning of the clip. So again, I'm just going to forward track this and speed it up. All right, so I'm actually going to hit the stop button here 
At any point in time when Premiere is tracking, you can hit stop and it will stop creating keyframes at that point. So as you can see, my highlighted kind of bush area that I was tracking is now out of the frame. There's no use me tracking nothing for the rest of the clip and having Premiere work. Now I'm just going to track everything before I started the keyframes forward. The spot I'm looking for sort of disappears right about there. So I will hit stop again. Just hit this button here, track selected mask backward, and that's going to do all the hard work for me. I'm just going to stop it manually as soon as my highlighted area disappears. So basically what we've done here is just highlighted an area, making it easier for me to see and track manually using this UI here, text and little arrow. So what I'm going to do real quick is just make it smaller, adjust it a bit and bring it over into position roughly. And then I'm going to extend my clip right about to there where as soon as this area comes into view and then I'm going to end it right there. Make sure you've clicked on your UR here layer. You can do this moving left to right on these two numbers or you can just double click and manually move it. I do like using this because it's more precise I find. All right. So once you're happy with where your starting point is going to be, you want to hit position and scale right where the stopwatches icons are and that's going to set a keyframe for where you want your image to start. So I want to have the tip of the arrow pretty much touching the top of the trees here. And now since I've motion tracked a mask, I can actually just skip a couple frames here. That's a good spot. And then I'm going to go ahead and click the two keyframes on scale and position. And then again, I'm just going to resize and adjust it. I'm not going to touch the scale yet. I want to do that at the very end. So as you can see, it already looks like the video is being tracked, but it's just some simple keyframing. All right, so here's another good point. I'm going to drop two keyframes just in case I do feel like adjusting the scale at all. Move this down over here a bit more. Make sure you're still clicked on the BUR here layer. Finally, add both your keyframes. Readjust one more time. In this final keyframe, I'm actually going to decrease the size of it just because I don't want this UR here to take up the entire right hand side of the screen. Now it just adds another element to the video as it decreases coming forward, kind of creating a parallax effect. Now just for fun, I'm going to throw a quick fade out with the opacity just so it seems again fluid and natural. So I'm going to move the playhead just before these two keyframes of position and scale. I'm going to click my opacity keyframe and then again I'm going to go to where these keyframes stop. And that's where the movement's going to finish. Now I'm going to click another keyframe and then drag this opacity all the way down to zero. So that way it's going to be a fluid fade out before the UR here text stops moving. I'm going to do the same thing at the beginning of the clip. Click on opacity here. Make sure it's at 100%. And then I'm going to drag just before right around where the tracking starts. I'm going to bring that down to zero. So it's a little fade in. And as you can see, the UR here text and arrow is actually tracking this tree. And I can actually delete this layer getting rid of my weird circle mask. I can play the entire clip and there it is. So one last thing, I added a bunch of these scale keyframes. You can choose at which point to start the decreasing of size by just deleting these two keyframes. So if I delete that and delete this, it's gonna have one steady decrease in size. But I do kind of like having it stay the same for a little bit there and then start to decrease as the area that I'm trying to track gets closer to the edge. So you can play with this as much as you want. But there you are, that's how you motion track in Adobe Premiere Pro for color grades, as well as if you'd like to track text or an image. It's a simple workaround, manual keyframing technique to create the same effect. And as always, type in filtergrade.com into your browser and check out some of the best video LUTs, Photoshop actions, Lightroom presets, and Capture One styles.